We are going to bounce now over to our field correspondent. I've labeled her the senior roving hall correspondent, Josephine Chang, who's out there on the hood floor to experience some of the great demos for herself. Absolutely, senior. Because you hear the buzz around me, that's because there's more than 100 people in here now for Demo Fest. They actually get to lay their hands on the actual products like Cortana or Lab of Things. And we are fortunate to have Evelyn Villegas here with us, and you're going to demonstrate something called Coda Lab. So briefly explain what Coda Lab is. Thank you, Josephine. So Coda Lab is an open source platform for machine learning research which allows you to learn from other researchers, to share data and code, and also to create experiments and collaborate with others. That's one aspect. And the other aspect is about being able to do some benchmarking by creating competitions. So let's see what you mean. Let's say that a researcher comes to your site, yeah. and then what, so, what do they... So this is where you come. This is codalab.org. And then I'm going to show right now one aspect, which is the first aspect about worksheets, what we call worksheets, which is about sharing data, sharing code, and really about doing an experiment and showing others how you went about solving a problem. So for instance, here if I look at this specific worksheet, which was created by Percy Leon, which by the way, if we're here this morning, Percy Leon is uh, from Stanford University. Right, and the here faculty is, award yes, winner, right? Exactly. Yeah. And so his vision on, for Coda Lab really comes from a person who is so, one of our community lead. So this is just an example, this Lewis Carroll poem. Cool. And what this is just an example. So here, actually, what you do is like you just see, for this example, I want to see how I'm going to take a poem, some text, and I want to parse it in the field of natural language processing. So I can describe what I do so somebody else can come and do exactly what I'm doing. So I'm Parsing, you mean to like figure out either what it means or to analyze it? Exactly. For instance, if you look at this little text here, what we're going to do is just like decompose this text in terms of figuring out what are the tokens, what are the words, what are the verbs, the nouns, the actions, the events. That's a funny, so. that's a funny poem. <laughs> twinkle, twinkle, little bat, how I wonder what you're at. Up above the world you fly, like a tea tray in the sky. Yeah. Now, do you want to know what the determiners, the nouns, the verbs are? Okay. So yeah, I want to know that. what the poem means. <laughs> <laughs> right. So what I'm going to show you today is just like you can actually use some libraries from uh, somewhere else in the world and apply them to your problem. So that's what we do here, for instance, with these uh, libraries. You discuss the process. You can put some metadata so that other researchers can actually redo what you're doing. That's really about reproducible research. What I'm going to show you, like, you know, we also have a command line interface, which means that you can run it and then you can actually then uh, provide some outputs uh, here if I manage to get there, and which gives you here all those determiners and all that. But it's not this example specific. That's not easy to, to understand. Right. So you exactly. have a better way to interpret it. Indeed. So now I'm, well, you know, I cannot really visualize all that. I mean, I cannot read. It's good for the machine, but not so much for me as a human, right? Or me. So, <laughs> indeed. So we're going to go and find some other uh, libraries. And now we're going to apply some visualization library. And the first thing I just showed you, we're going, we're going to show you now some little uh, visualization here, which is going to come up and where you'll be able, in a second here, to, uh, to see, right? So now those determiner, there is a determiner, these are noun phrases, uh, so on and so forth. All so right. the import... So, mm -hmm. That's just an example. I that's mean, obviously, they're not going to be analyzing poems. They'll be analyzing data sets. Absolutely. Uh, and, and why wouldn't a scientist want to share? I mean, aren't, aren't scientists sometimes a little proprietary about their work? Well, it's okay to be proprietary and to be, you know, like uh, want to keep it to yourself at the very beginning while you are kind of experimenting. But as part of the science, process and the research process, you want to make sure that your results can be validated by others. And that's the whole point here. Okay. Really making it really, really easy to be able to do reproducible research. And that's I want, to bring, in here, I want yeah. to bring in here Isabel Guyon, who is a researcher at ChaLearn. She's uh, someone who uses CodeLab, a customer, basically. So can you show us like how you run competitions, right, that, to, that sort of um, allow scientists to figure out what is the best solution to a problem. That's right. Um, I'm the president of uh, Challenge, which is an organization dedicated to organizing uh, challenges in machine learning that are competitions uh, that uh, in which scientists can demonstrate excellence. Uh, and show we put us, out. Show uh, us an example. 
we put out a number of problems. So recently, we put out a competition on the cause-effect pairs. The participants had to determine whether given some uh, variables, A is a cause of B or B is a cause of A. And they made a true breakthrough. They improved tremendously compared to the baseline performance. So for example, if A is uh, smoking and B could be lung cancer, does A cause B? That's correct. You, you see lots of claims, you know, in the media. Recently, people claim that the chocolate consumption was influencing uh, the brain because there was a, an article in the New England Journal of Medicine where actually uh, the researchers showed this correlation between chocolate consumption and the number of Nobel Prizes per capita. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm all for that. Eat more chocolate. Anyway, let's see the results of the competition. Like, who won and what is that? So, here are the, the winners. So, starting from performances that were near 0.5, so near random, the best uh, ent entrance made a big leap in performance. Uh, uh, the, error, um, the error rate fell down in that the accuracy is near 82%. And that for, you know, an execution time which is relatively modest. The, the beauty of Coda Lab is that it lets participants submit their code, so the code can be uh, benchmarked and both the speed is measured as well as the accuracy. That's interesting. So the competition lets them arrive at answers quicker, but also then they can collaborate afterwards as to who, what good ideas that they have. Very interesting work. Thank you, Evelyn. And you can go to codalab.org to try it out, to register and try it out. Chris?